We've got some new Callaway wedges for you today. Guys, I've got the brand new Callaway Jaws Raw for 2022. We've got two finishes, as you can see with what's in my hand here. And the main talking point, for me especially, is that brand new raw face that is going to rust over time. A new addition for Callaway in 2022. Big change to other ones they've done with the Mac Daddy, the high toe. Interesting, but what does this really mean? I'm gonna hit some shots here at Manning's Heath with both of these clubs. As you can see, I've got the 52 and 56 in the same grind and bounce options, but they are in a different finish. I'm probably going to go many towards the 56. We're going to talk about a brand new grind as well. Oh, all right. Well, first things first about these wedges is aesthetically, they look really, really good. They've really made them comparable to Vokey in Golf Magic's opinion. Having the raw face for all of their wedges in the Jaws Raw, as well as their most aggressive grooves ever, is going to make this supposedly a spin machine. I'm going to jump in the 56 first. We've got about 110 or so yards. Annoyingly, it is back pin. Am I going to get close? I'm probably going to spin it off the back or so, but we'll see. Spinning, spinning. That was a really nice shot there, just straight out the middle. And I feel like we're going to leave the drone footage to decide how much that spanned back, but it looked like it had kind of like a one hop and then came back. Getting some good spin numbers there as well. About 10,000, 10,200 to be exact with the full swing launch monitor. Good. It does really feel nippy as well, the way in which I'm clicking it off the face. I'm using the Chrome Soft X golf ball, which I would say is a little bit of a soft golf ball. And I don't think it feels that soft off the face, more clicky with these grooves, but I still a very positive, positive feel. Looking down at it, I haven't mentioned, obviously it's not a full face of grooves like the high toe. So I wouldn't really lead this to be a forgiving game improvement type of wedge. But what I really like about it is that pearl shaped finish. And also it's got a really straight lead the edge as well and this is for all of the clubs 52 56 and 60. this can change dependent on what grind you're using a brand new grind is the z grind their most versatile grind ever with the sole being extremely versatile which means you can open up close it a really interesting introduction with the jaws raw pulled that one slightly with the ball above my feet but i can tell that one span quite a lot there that's it that's it no 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 so the problems <laughs> of having a back pin with an extremely spinny face there is that came back about 30 foot spins good spins extremely good in a lot of cases when it's a back pin this is what pros encounter as well when it's back pin and you know you're going to get spin it's almost like you're going to have to take spin off it i mean if that's the club it should be by about six foot yeah really good there it's still going it's still going. Stop it. It's an incredibly nice feeling wedge though across any sort of brands. I think if I had to liken it to any other type of wedge in the last few years, Ping's most recent pro range, the Forge Pro range, one that's a bit more like a pair drop, not as forgiving as let's say some high toe offerings. I'd probably say it's similar to that. Sit. Oh, sit. Oh, I've missed the green twice. Well, I'm, <laughs> my wedge game isn't very good, but you can see even that one there span a little bit. Ball above my feet is still making it, in terms of dispersion for an amateur golfer, I don't actually think that's been very good, but that's more because it's quite difficult to control the spin when there is so much of it to a back pin position. We're gonna move a little bit closer now to about 50 yards and see from full swings, you'd always expect a little bit of stop. But if you're getting a little 50 yard chip shot or so, is it gonna one hop and stop? Because that's really important for a lot of golfers. Kind of killed it against the slope there, but it's a very good shot. That one was slightly on the high side of the face. With this wedge, I don't think it's really towards the, the high handicap players as such. But then you can compare other sorts of brands and have a combo set. Have a high toe for those 60 degree, 56 or so, and then go down into that set of jaws raw for a 52. Nope, okay, didn't get a lot of spin on that one. Interesting, so I'm not finding I'm getting that much spin on the shorter shots, because I felt that one as well when I hit it. I felt that one very zippy. Again, that is the shot. And did one hop and stop there. Not as much as on full swing shots, which again, we're not saying we're blown away by this. We're not surprised, it's not negative, but something to consider is obviously the spin will increase when you hit those full swing shots. Just not as nippy as you can see with the little ones. So factor that in if you do buy these clubs. All right, that one's got a nip. Yeah, there you go. So that one was probably the spinniest of the lot there. So I think it really is important as to your angle of attack and how you're hitting them to see the perfect results. I think when you're hitting full shots, 
it's gonna get a lot of spin either way. To really see optimal results from 50 yards in or so, you've got to know how to actually hit the little one hop and stopper. You can't buy this club and just expect to do it. You gotta understand the technology, the technique just behind it. As you can see, I haven't really got it clued in myself yet, so I wouldn't really trust myself to do it. But if you do know how to do it, it looks very, very nice. By having two different finishes of these clubs, I do think it will then appeal to a lot more golfers. Everyone's always gonna have a personal preference. You can see I have got this one here, more of the black finish in my hand. I don't actually prefer this. I more prefer the chrome satin finish, especially when it rusts. But there's a lot of people that I know that disagree with me. I think these are pretty hand in hand with TaylorMade's MG3 offerings this year and last year. But one thing is I think it does provide a little bit more versatility with the introduction of some different grinds and also with how aggressive the face is. I think it's certainly maybe the spinniest wedge that I've tried of 2022. Is that from an all consistency point of view from everywhere, from 100 yards, 50 yards or so? I'm not too sure. I think my testing that I've shown on camera has shown that there may be some inconsistencies from 50 yards and then dependent on where and how you hit it. But my overall testing that I've done over the last few weeks it has actually shown that from wherever you hit it, I'm getting a lot of spin. That was juicy. Golf Magic Opinion, I think wedges are quite a personal choice sometimes. You can get custom fitted, as I have been for my Vokies, you can get custom fitted for any wedges. So although I don't think the George Raws are number one on my list, they still can definitely compete with a lot of wedges in 2022. If you guys want me to compare the Callaway wedges for 2022, the George Raw, to TaylorMade's offering, the MG3, you want me to compare it to Ping's offering, Titleist's offering, let me know down in the comments. And let me know your thoughts on the Jaws roll as well. I do think they're a really strong, tall offering, but I would lean something a little bit more forgiving as amateur golfers. Guys, if you have enjoyed this video today, smash that like button. And if you are new to Golf Magic as well, hit the subscribe button as well. We've got a lot of really exciting, honest reviews coming soon. September, lots of fun things coming. So make sure you smash that subscribe button to stay tuned. I'm gonna practice my wedge game because those 50 yard shots were not good enough. So I'll see you guys in the next video.